Hello, good morning, and welcome back to the fish locker out on the boat. Now, as you can see, it is a stunning day on the boat. I've made my way out, feathered up a couple of mackerel, first decent mackerel so far, and I'm just going to run my first drift over a wreck. Now, one of my targets this year was to get a big Congo on my boat. And one of the best places to fish for those is on wrecks. You pick small tides, calm days, and you anchor up onto wrecks or reefs. What I'm planning to do today is I'm just going to feather up some bait and then I'm going to anchor up on some wrecks. Now the wreck that I've picked today, I have fished it once before for ling, and it has fished well. It's the first time that I've anchored this wreck. There is a bit of fishing gear around, but there is fishing gear everywhere at the moment. Hopefully it won't cause us any trouble. Ideally now, right now, I'm running a set of baited feathers over a wreck. Just drifting slowly over it. Not only will that tell me which way I'm going to drift to where to put the anchor, but also it will get me some bait, because conger love eating pouting. It'll get me some bait and it will tell me what the life of the wreck is like. As you might have heard me say before, if there aren't any small fish, there won't be any big fish. Reason being is because if there aren't any small fish, there is nothing for the big fish to eat. I think we'll put some mackerel on the way down. Now there are an awful lot of small mackerel around at the moment. And when I say small, I mean small. Like that small and smaller. Well. They're alright for live baits but they're not much good for anything else. Try and drop the boat back. As the tide is going in that direction, I would have to anchor up over there. The back of the boat would be facing that way, so the sun would be right on the camera. Oh, there is a huge compass jelly there. I'm trying to avoid getting that on my line. Down snorkeling on the beach the other day, and I got one of them across my face. On my face and my top lip was stung. Wasn't a pleasant experience. Now you will catch ling using this method but usually what happens is they'll bite the trace off because mackerel feathers are on a light line and ling have got really sharp teeth quite often you'll get a real good bite it'll just bite you off come up and one of your hooks will be missing what I'm expecting is pouting or whiting Big old pouty. Look. You see he's got a leech on his eyeball. Poor guy. This day's just not going very well, is it? Not in there. <laughs> okay. We'll swing round and see if we can't put the anchor down. From those of you who have seen my other videos, seen my anchoring videos, I use an Alderney ring technique to haul the anchor. Now we're anchoring in 227 feet of water. So I'm going to be letting out around about 450 to 500 feet of rope. No matter how you coil an anchor rope, <laughs> it will tangle up. Mark where I dropped that anchor. Marking where you dropped your anchor is important when you come to hauling it. See how we lay? Okay, to try and describe to you, you can see there 
where I put my anchor down and the tide and the, the tide's going that way the wind's going that way so it's laid me diagonally right at the bottom of the wreck oh cheeky guys snapped my lead off right well that's plenty of bait we'll get him spiked and sent down as a as a conga bait first baits i send down if you have them i always like to send mackerel down first and one of the fresh mackerel that i've caught you can see i've just feathered it off and sending that down because the fuller scent a little pouting and whiting will come and chew this up and it'll create a scent trail and then you can send other baits down so if i can and i have them i always like to send mackerel down first and the rig that i'm using is just a very simple running ledger rig now look, i'm gonna have eight or a ten ounce lead on there a strong snap swivel and it just hooks straight on like that as simple as can be huh. must have dropped it right on someone's nose yeah Probably a little ling or a pouting playing with it. I was just about to say that we'll pack up because there's, there's fishing gear across this wreck and I've lost two lots of gear in it already. come off what a bugger oh it's tied me right in a knot pinged itself off oh no that was the first decent fish I've had all day just been losing gear all day oh, what a nightmare well I know there's one there we'll get baited back up and send it back down It's not as big as the last one, but it's a fish. Oh, it's a big old link. It is a big old link. I'm gonna find where that hook is. There you are. A cracking ling that'll be. That'll be twenty pound. Not as big as the one that I've just lost though. A brilliant stocky fish. Oh. I don't usually wear a cap, but <laughs> it is especially sunny today. Starting to feel it a little bit. Oh, right, that was my wrecking rig that did the damage there. Fresh mackerel on the top, octopus on the bottom, and I think we'll send that back down. I don't think it was a ling that I had last time, I think it was a conger. And it felt a lot bigger. Well, it's good to finally get a fish on the deck. <laughs> lost two and lost like five rigs as well. Ah, there's a, there's a bit of fishing gear. I don't know if you can see the, the pink ender in the back. There's another one up there. I've shot some fishing gear right down, right down the wreck. Hopefully we can stay on the right side of it. Uh, I found that my wrecking rig does pull out more link. Ling generally take the top hook, whereas Congo will take the bottom hook. 
There is a video on the fish locker workshop showing how to make that wrecking rig. It's basically like a scratching rig for big fish. It's got a cracking bite on that rod there. That's the thing when fishing into a wreck like this. First couple of seconds and first few feet are crucial. Because you have to get the fish up out of the wreck. It's not a bad conger eel. Not a monster by anyone's standards, but not a bad one. There you go. I'm gonna try and kick the I'm gonna try and slap the camera in there. Pop him off the hook first. Easiest way to use a T-bar and all you do is you slide down the bend of the hook with the T-bar, turn the hook and use the fish's own weight to pull the hook out. <laughs> I'm having to be careful because I've got bare feet. <laughs> Taking my wellies off to try and calm my feet down. I don't really want a conger attached to me toe. Right. There you go. He's had he's had somewhat of a go at him. You see them scratches upside of his head. That's been another fish that's tried to have a bite of him. And this one will be yeah, well into double figures. They are! They are, they are great fighting fish, they are good good fun, but I tell you what, they're a handful. When you're holding them up, easiest way is to get two of your fingers like that, go up inside of there. That way you're away from the teeth and they can't twist themselves around. Eels really don't take any time to go back down, they're straight down. Fishing on wrecks like what we are now. You are gonna lose gear anyway, you're gonna lose gear in the wreck. Also you're gonna lose you're gonna lose fish into the wreck. It's just one of those things. It's a calculated risk. And as I am now, I'm sat perfectly right on the wreck. See where that seagull is there? The wreck ends about where that seagull is. I'm sat, it's a real long one, it sits like with the tide. My boat right now, bang underneath my boat, is, is the front of the wreck. The back of the wreck's there, so my baits are on top of it. They're in it. So you need to be quick. As soon as you get that first bite, let it get a proper, because you'll get some you'll get some taps. Conga can give you anything from like a little pecking mouthing bite to the rod just doubles over. So you need to be on it. You'll notice that I'll hold the rod and when I get a good nod when I get a good nod or a lunge, I'll wind down and point the rod to the water. That's taking up as much line as possible. So as soon as I strike and start winding, there's no slack line. Because like I said, it is crucial that you get them up out of the wreck quickly. Because you're gonna lose gear, what I do is I have a little wallet that's made up and it's just got lots of different rigs in so that straight away as soon as I come up if all I've done is I've lost my rig on the end is I'll just get a new wrecking rig out 
or I'll get a new running ledger out. And I've just made all these up at home. And if like today, if I start losing a few of them, when I've got a free moment, like possibly now, is I'll just knock another one up. Just so I will never run out. I'll never be in a position where I have to make a new rig. Because it's just lost fishing time. That bright, I might even get my sunglasses out. We have another two hours of tide. We'll see how we do, and then over slack water, and we might do a bit of drifting. And depending on what the day's like, if the wind's picked up, when it starts to go the other way, we might re anchor on the other side of the wreck. See the bite? See that? Ah. It's a proper lunging bite. <laughs> it's back. Found it that time. Must have dropped it back down right on its head. Oh, another big link. Don't worry, I don't really want link. Get my camera bag out of the way. So I don't get it soaking wet. See you Wrecking rid again. This time it was the bottom hook. There you go. Another cracking link. It's real solid fish. Yeah, real solid fish. You can see by how wide its head is. Yeah, look. And they have got. Well, if you'll open up, they have got some wicked teeth. See this bib underneath? Yeah, look, you see them teeth? See that bib there underneath its chin? That shows it's part of the cod family. Another real good stocky fish. The problem with ling is they suffer really badly with barotrauma. See when they come up they're all gassed up. They've usually got like a big sack in their mouth. They don't cope with the change in pressure. So they're dead when they hit the boat. I mean it might be writhing and flapping around here but it's already dead, it won't be. It won't survive being returned. Congers can swim all the way to the top and all the way back down again, don't even, don't even bat an eyelid. But sadly they don't. But we'll gladly take them for the table and I know that my mother-in-law We'll uh, gladly take a bit of fish. Got to keep them happy, don't you? Yeah, that wrecking rig's been killing it. I've got a running ledger on that other one. With a big piece of octopus on it. That's usually a killer for conger. Just, um, just didn't seem to find it. Get that wrecking rig baited back up and get it down. That last fish there, I hope you saw it. I was getting some bites. And I struck and I wound. And I missed it. The fish wasn't, it didn't commit. And then all I did was I just dropped straight back down again and I dropped it onto another fish. That just shows you that if there's a couple of fish down there competing and you miss one, if you drop down straight away again, there'll be another one there. 
I told I am bang on top of the wreck. This is where the fish are. I'm I'm dropping a bait outside the front door. If one fish doesn't take it, another one will. Just like you saw there. Usually, typically, ling are quicker on the baits than conger. I'm hoping that there aren't going to be too many more ling down there and I'm going to be able to get to the conger. Because conger can catch them all day and they'll just go straight back. They just return, they return really well. Really tough fish. As with any, like, um, any specimen hunt, if you're ever hunting for a large fish, you do generally have to wade through quite a few small ones first. There, look. You see the bite? That's a good fish. Yeah, I'm going to get amongst that. Oh no, it's got itself in the wreck. Oh, you bugger. Wasn't quick enough getting it out of the wreck. Oh, yeah, I am. Lost the fish, but <laughs> ah well. As I dropped slack off to try and bounce the hook out of the wreck, the fish got some slack line and managed to turn the hook out. But you can see what I mean. You've got to be sharp on it. I spent an extra five seconds there trying to show you a video. I'll put the video in on my phone. Trying to show you what the bite was like. That extra five seconds that it took to show you that video cost me that fish. Oh yes. <sighs> Bound itself up in a wreck again. Yeah, there is a fish. There is a fish attached to that other one. It's taking me in the wreck. Oh, it's heading back down. Oh. Just popped it off at the last second. I don't know if you managed to see that conger there. It was about the same size as the last one. Yeah, mid mid teens to twenty. Sort this out, and then I'll try and get that. Try and get that sorted. I don't even think the fish is still attached to it. I think the fish has got itself off, but it's traded me for a snag. Right, I lost that rig in the wreck. This one was over the back. Got my gloves on and tried to pull it out. I could feel it bouncing. So I know it was one of the hooks stuck. It's um, come for a little bit and then come tight. So it's probably a piece of net or it could be that fishing gear. But either way, the fish had got off. The fish had got itself some slack and got itself off and traded me for a snag. You can tell that I must have been rubbing up against the wreck when it pulled me in there because on the end of my leader, if you can feel it, up to there, all along there is all roughed up. So when you get your, when you get your, your leader back like this, run your fingers along it, because if there's any abrasion, like here, you need to snip it off. I don't know whether you can see it, but it is all, all chafed up or it's been rubbing against the wreck. That's where the fish pulled down into the wreck. I did manage to get like 10 or 15 feet back off it. I think probably as the fish sort of slipped the hook and I tried to pull it back out again, I pulled it into a snag. Now all we'll do is we'll just tie a new trace on now, get back fishing. Oh, 
Come on. That one wants to be back in the wreck. Now that is a nice conger eel. That is a nice size eel. Well, I tell you what. There, look. You see the size of his head now, can't you? The thing with eels, you can't be scared of them. As soon as you're a little bit hesitant, that's when it'll get you. Shows you there the size of it. Oh, it's well it's still touching the floor, it's almost six foot long. Slippery as an eel, would you believe? There you go. Get a photo and we'll let him go. This floor's gonna need a wipe as well. Big flap and he's away. I say they don't. <laughs> they don't care about the change in pressure. He'll go straight back down there, no worries. Just left me with a load of mess. I think unless we get a bigger one, I'll just tee by the rest off at the side. You know what it looks like, don't you? What's been happening is I've been getting an awful lot of pouting bites. So to combat that, all I've been doing is I've been piling my baits on and I've been tipping them with some octopus tentacles. Octopus tentacles are incredibly tough. Think like car tyre tough. So even though the little fish are there and ragging it and ragging it and ragging it and chewing it all up and creating that big scent cloud, the tentacles still stay. And <laughs> you can catch, catch five fish on an octopus. That snag at the back, I can, feel, I can feel it's the hook and it's stuck on the metal of the wreck. I can feel because it's a real sharp bang. Sometimes you can bounce them, you can bounce them out and the lead, by twanging the lead around, it, it acts as like a lever and it pulls the hook out. Sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> also what can happen is if you leave it like that, if it's got a good bait on, Sometimes a fish will pick it up and it'll take you out and snag. So even though I'm snagged up, it's, you should never try and snap yourself out immediately. Give it a few minutes. It'll maybe bounce out itself, you can maybe spring it out, a fish might take it out. Don't snap it off straight away. Don't think, oh I'm snagged up, that's it, and pull for a break. Give it a few minutes. I will get to that rod in a second. I don't know if you can see those dolphins there. You might notice that sometimes I real fast and sometimes I real slow. All I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to keep a bend in the rod. Another gassy link. There you go. What a lovely motley on motley colour on this one. Again, great big head. This is about the size that I like taking for, for the table. I find that if you get them in a really really big, they're just full of worms. It might not be something that, that you want to know about, but other people have asked me, so I'm going to say. To dispatch them, I have a sharpened screwdriver. And it, it's similar to the Ick Jimmy method, in that you spike behind the eye into the brain, which kills them off. And I also get a pair of, get a pair of tin snips. And you see how these gills are bright pink, bright pink and red. It's supposed to still full of blood. 
you snip them really quickly and you bleed it out over the side so it, it bleeds it out so it saves the meat and it's dead that's how I do it anyway just what I was saying about perseverance that snag that I had all that time sat at the back of the boat managed to get it out and there's a fish on it it's swimming towards me now congas sometimes do that when they're deep hooked there we go, caught up to it again you've got to stay yeah it is all that time the rod was sat at the back I didn't snap it off just left it just like I was saying because sometimes you can bounce it out sometimes a fish will pick it up exactly what had happened there the fish had picked it up as soon as I put my glove on as soon as I put my glove on and I started bouncing it managed to bounce the lead free and bounce the fish free as well You're in rasping, can't you? You spin like that and use the rasping teeth to break through the line. Unclip the trace and you're just dealing with the fish. This one's got a real big head on it. Didn't even stop to say goodbye. Right, the tide's, tide's swinging round. We've swung off the opposite side of the wreck now. We spent a long time sat on top of it, perfect. Did manage to get a few nice fish out, so I'm happy with that. And that there, I hope it shows you, all that time there when I'd left that rod up on the back and I knew it was stuck. And I'd said to you, sometimes like the swing of the boat or the tide or a fish can even get you out of a snag. If you've got a good bait on there, I had a lot of bait. I left a big bait down there and I thought, yeah, I'll tell you what, I'll leave that and I'll come back to it. Because the hook can just be, if this is like a snag, the hook can just be lipped underneath it and you can't get it out. But if a fish picks it up, it pulls it out of the snag for you. The same way sometimes if you get a fish and it takes you into a snag, if you just hold pressure on it, sometimes it'll come back out itself. So that fish there, that saved me, it saved me losing my gear and it was an extra fish. Now I generally use, for my traces, I'll use 200 to 300 pound mono. That isn't because you're catching 200 to 300 pound fish. I wish we were, but that is why. And I hope the footage shows that that conger there, they roll around and they rasp. They spin and they rasp and their teeth break through it. And all that time that that fish was sat there on the bottom, it was probably just going and rasping at it. So that there, that's Rovex 10 times, I think that's 200 pound. And look at how chewed up it is. That's what it's like normally. And that's what it's like now. That's why you need strong mono. I also like a Muppet, possibly because I am one. Oh, come on, get out of there, get out of that wreck. That was the shyest bite ever. That was the shyest bite ever. It was the tiniest little 
and I just picked it up and it just slowly started creeping away like that. Just lifted it up and just felt like a little bit of a... You see how he's thrashing in the water there? When he thrashed side to side, that's when, you, if you're looking at the rod tip, when you see the rod tip, like doing one of them, it's doing a thrash. You need to be careful when it's up on the surface because when it starts rolling and thrashing like that, it can fire the lead off. Got a really stocky head on him. Round the bend of the hook like that and go. There he is. Right. See what type of a mess he's made of me rig now, though. Oh, that was lucky. If I hadn't have kept hold of that lead, look, look how he's completely opened that, that clip out. Right. I've given it as long as I can. The tide has swung us back round again and unfortunately the wind has picked up. You can probably see that we're rocking around quite a bit more and there is more movements. You often find that happens. You often find that the wind will pick up as the tide turns. Unfortunately this means that we now have wind against tide. We don't have a strong tide and we have a pretty decent wind and we are just swinging around. I have had a fantastic day on this wreck. I've got three lovely table sized link still cooling down up over the side on a stringer I, I don't even know how many congas I've had I don't know <laughs> I don't know but it's been a good day uh, the rigs that we were using today the last couple of fish because I was because I was snagging up because I was hooking fish and they were taking me into the wreck and I was snagging up on the other hook of the wrecking rig all I did was I just made a small one which is just a one hook wrecking rig basically just a standoff blood loop paternoster and that accounted for three of the best fish the baits that I've been using today I've been using a mixture of fresh mackerel pouting a little bit of octopus and that one actually was cuttlefish the octopus, I tip all the baits with the octopus just because it's tougher and the pouting can't chew it up as much. On the other rod I was using a running ledger rig. Both rods caught fish, both rigs caught fish. My... I'll quickly talk about this. This is my standard conga setup. It's a 30 to 50 class rod and it's a TLD 20. This one on this rod is actually A single speed TLD 20. They are cracking heavy boat rods. He sorry, heavy boat reels. This is an ugly stick that I actually rebuilt in one of my other videos. And it's nailed the fish today. I love this because it's got it's got quite a soft action on it. Yeah. If we catch anything else or if I see anything else worth showing you, I'll put it in the video. If I don't, then I won't. I hope this has been interesting for you. I hope you've enjoyed joining me. And have a good one. Well, that doesn't happen every day. <laughs> that rock has probably never seen the light of day.